All right, this is going to be uh, my initial review of my end of year 2017 Perception Pescador Pilot 12.0 kayak. Uh, this is a fishing kayak, pedal driven. It's the cheapest on the market. I just got mine at Academy for $14.99. So that's far cheaper than anybody else on the market. Uh, there's a lot you can get for the boat for the amount of money you're saving. <clears throat> so I'm just going to give a real in-depth walk around of the things I've noticed and everything. I just got done putting this thing together. It was still in the package and uh, I went over every nut and bolt, loosened everything that looked like it was going to be important and uh, looked to see what the backings were. I went over everything that was holding it together. Anything that's really important, I made sure I had Loctite, which it turned out most of it already did. And uh, made the adjustments and I get, got it ready for going my, my first maiden voyage. This thing's ready to go for a couple seasons, I'd say. Uh, so let's get into it. It's going to be pretty long, but hang tight. It's worth it if you're actually interested in getting something like this. All right, so I guess we'll talk, start off with the specs for this bad boy. Uh, it's rated to hold uh, 525 pounds, I believe. Something, 515, something like that. Uh, but that's on the actual tag that was on the kayak. If you go to the, the website, for perception, they've changed it now to 475. Uh, I guess they retested it or had too many pushing it, too many people pushing it. But uh, either way, it's pretty darn high for as far as kayaks go. This one's supposed to be pretty stable. I haven't had it on the water yet. It's made for fishing. Uh, I've seen a lot of other reviews where people are saying that it's pretty darn stable. It's not as stable as some of the most stable ones, but this one's also very easy to paddle uh, whenever you're not using the uh, pedal, which is important. I'm going to be in a lot of this inshore down here in Mobile, Alabama, where I'm at right now. Uh, and there's a lot of shallow water marshes, at which point I'll have that drive tilted forward like it is right now. And I will be uh, paddling. So uh, I'll go underneath. It's uh, 12 and a half feet long. Uh, it has a 16 inch draft, so it's recommended not to go any shallower than 18 inches for pedaling. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it's 34 inches wide. I sat down in the seat. I'm a six foot tall, 200 pound guy, and I have a lot of clearance on my sides. A little bit of love handles going on, but not too bad. But uh, there's plenty of room on the side. It's a pretty nice wide seat. It feels very comfortable. Uh, the seat itself has a lumbar support you can adjust. It's literally just two straps on the back, and the tighter you tighten them, the more stiffer this arch that's already designed into it is. You loosen it up, and it'll, it'll straighten out when you lean into it. Uh, one more thing to add, a lot of the uh, users online, there's a Facebook, couple of Facebook pages for this boat. I uh, saw some people talking about the, uh, they can get up and cruise all day long and uh, water at three, three and a half knots. An easy pace, easy cruising pace, and if they really push on it, they can hold four and a half knots for quite a while, but they'll burn all, out after like 20 minutes of that pace. So it all depends on how kind of shape you're in, I suppose. I'll probably be on the lower end. I'm pretty out of shape nowadays. Uh, so three and a half knots is great for speed for trolling, which I will be using this. I've also seen a lot of videos online where the guys are like in the waves, going into the wind, and they're still holding two and a half to three knots pretty steady at an easy pace. And that's with waves crashing over the bow and everything. All right, so for the hole, uh, you can see it's got a nice little wedge here on the front for trying to cut into the waves. It's uh, 12 and a half feet long, so it'll help a little bit. And it's pedal driven. Uh, you can see... From about a, all right, so you can see from about a stern here, uh, there's a nice gentle slope going like that. That reminds me of a river drift fishing boats that I, that I played with in Alaska there for a little while. Uh, so it should have minimal drag. All right, so just behind the, uh, the front of the nose there, you got this recessed scupper hole here, which actually the front of that, that thing continues all the way up to the edge of the scupper hole to protect it a little bit and it's recessed from the actual main part of the hole too here. But uh, as you can see, it's already pre-drilled. It looks like it's got some stainless hardware and it had some uh, brass inserts inside of that. So that's gonna hold the, that's where you're gonna put your fish finder and stuff. Uh, as far as the uh, flap, as you can see right now, I've got it set to the zero, zero draft position. Uh, that's what kind of draft it's got. 
I would totally be comfortable pulling that up on some heavy rocks. This thing is this thing is heavy built. So there's some some sections in there that are like a half an inch thick of aluminum or more. Uh, so the thing is, I wouldn't I could totally hit, tap that with my sledge and not worry about it. Uh, this got a nice little when you pull this out, or even with it up in here, uh, this little rubber rubber mat here. It's about an eighth of an inch thick or so. It's very heavy duty. Uh, it's going to basically make it a little bit more, a little bit less drag, and it's not going to have as much splashing. Uh, a lot of people on some of the kayaks, when you pull this out and you're paddling real hard, you'll have water start splashing everywhere. Uh, this one shouldn't do it. It's pretty well, pretty well recessed in there and protected. As you can see, that inside of the uh, kayak goes all the way up to right, right there. So that's the. Wait a minute, that's the cover. That's the plastic cover in there. So it's gonna be about like right there is where the inside of the hole goes to. Uh, scupper holes, uh, they're pretty well set to have a little as little drag as possible too. Every one of them. There's nine of them on this boat. You got the one that's for the fish finder up front, and then you got eight more in the back. And then in the very back back here, I don't hear anybody talk about this in much of the reviews, but you got a replaceable bumper pad. Uh, protect it. I always see people doing in other YouTube videos and stuff. They're doing repairs on their kayaks uh, for both the nose and this. Uh, the nose, they usually just put uh, a little bit of duct tape on it because it's very minimal. But this stuff, this one, this one right here is the one that ends up dragging a lot. You can see I've already drug it a little bit getting off the vehicle. Uh, I got the little drain port here in the back. So if you're going to drain it, you got get something nice and solid here. You can stand it on the end of the, end of the tail there. Uh, let's go around and start doing the. Uh, Review of the top part. All right, so uh, back up here at the nose, uh, you got a very interesting uh, design, rotor molded in here. Uh, looks pretty. It's a beautiful little kayak here. This one right here is called the Sonic Blue. It just looks like it's meant to be on the water, huh? Uh, one thing I did like about the uh, top surfaces compared to most of the other kayaks or a lot of the other ones, is there's a lot of flat surfaces here, so there's a lot of areas where you can mount things later on you can mount just about anything you can think of uh, you can tell they put in a lot of thought for this for this kayak all right so as uh, far as all the hardware on this entire boat I looked at every single hardware on everything and as far as I can tell everything looks to be like high quality hardware uh, it's all good stainless steel all of it looks like it's forged it's like the same stuff that we use on the helicopters that I work on and they're military helicopters, so uh, the hardware on this seems to be good. It should be resistant, should resist corrosion reasonably well. I uh, tightened everything up. I did find some, a couple of loose screws here and there, but they weren't super loose or anything. They weren't on stuff that was important. Uh, most of the bolt, any of the bolts that looked like they needed, should be Loctited, were already Loctited. So, and they were obviously paid attention to this. Uh, as far as this front uh, storage area goes, uh, it doesn't have a hole, instead it has this net thing, which is very easy to open. Uh, and you got the, the scupper hole there for the uh, transducer, but it's also a scupper hole, so I plan on putting some fish in here and letting them bleed out before I throw them in the cooler. And I'm going to store my net in here, and I'll probably, because uh, I'll probably be wearing flip-flops during the summertime, I'll come in here and run, run one of these straps through the toes and then stick my flip-flops out of the way. And then... Uh, that's probably the main thing it's going to get used for. As you can see, I got my El Chico fishnet from Academy. Uh, it fits in here perfectly, it turns out. But uh, if I put it this right here forward in the stow position, and that's in there when I do it, it locks it in. So whenever I do my beach landings, because I do plan on going beyond the breakers, BTB, uh, quite a bit down here. Uh, this Gulf Coast is going to have some good fishing, hopefully. Uh, but uh, it locks it in there, so like even if I flip my boat, I'm not going to lose my paddle. Uh, and then, here, let's go ahead and, actually I'll just keep working my way back. Uh, as for that scupper hole where you put the, uh, the fish finder transducer, uh, this actually already comes with pre-made holes, so you no drilling required. So you can run your wires up, there's a hole up here, I don't know if you can see that, just go on this side too. Uh, you got one on both sides so you can run your uh, wires from your transducer into here to your battery of Which I've got stuff in here already ready to go fishing uh, made, my, made my own little toolkit for what I needed 
anything I, when I got done working on this, I made sure all the tools I used they ended up in this little zip like that here. But uh, you have room to put yourself a good sized battery in here, all the wiring, run the wiring out, and then have your fish finder. And you can do it to whichever side. You don't have to drill anything. And then just zip tie your wires up nice and neat inside there. So you don't have a big old mess. These things are very easy to get into. Uh, it's like a a little bit less than an eighth of an inch rubber mat up here, so you don't have any hinges that are going to rust out. Or and if it does dry rot, then it's literally you can just use whatever the heck you want to to make a new hinge. Uh, it's good. It's very easy to get into and get out of. Uh, everything on this boat's replaceable. It looks like. Uh, keep working my way back. Uh, the uh, inside the footwell here. Uh, you got. A pretty good amount of space you can lay a fish and pretty good sized fish up in here uh, and these right here I can fit my uh, I got some Plano 3500s out of my tackle box uh, you can fit I think 30 3600 size in here but as you can see the 3500s got plenty of space on this end and that end there is no strap to hold it in but you can just slosh it around here the way it's set up there's a little lip on the back edge right there so it's just gonna be there Unless you roll your kayak, of course. So don't don't have that out when you're going in doing some beach landings or whatever. Um, of course, you could always fix your own little strap coming through a little bunchy. Uh, there's also a handle in here on both sides. That's good for carrying. I don't know if you can see them. I got my seat all the way forward. My kids are just out here. I'm gonna slide this back. The seat's very easy to adjust. Uh, the far, if you go, I did notice that if you go loosen this too far uh, with these plastic type tracks, same thing for up here. If you have anything in the tracks, you can loosen it too far. Then when you go forward, it's good. I'm going to loosen them up far enough. Oop, that's all the way. It's going to catch on that screw that's in the rail there. So just when you're loosen it, just don't loosen it up all the way. Uh, as you can see, I'll probably have mine probably somewhere around in there. Uh, so it'll be easy to get in here, get in the tackle boxes, and you get your handles there. Uh, you got a good size cup holder here. Uh, I have a Walmart brand Ozark Trail uh, tumbler, Walmart tumbler. Uh, I think it works amazing. It'll keep something hot for several hours in cool weather. Uh, same thing for cool in hot weather. Uh, but it fits in there. It's a little wobbly, but it's it's definitely not going to fall out of the boat or anything like that. Uh, you got some uh, little spots here. I assume this is for like an anchor mount or something for if you put your anchor trolley on the side. And I'm thinking maybe that would be good for a downrigger, which I may get one of those eventually. Uh, also, I noticed that the uh, the Plano boxes here. Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and pull this drive up real quick. Pull this pin out right here. Pull it out. Pull this over. You can notice that the uh, rubber mat on the bottom is actually holding it up right now. And then pull it up. It's super easy. It took me a while to get this adjusted properly, but once you get it adjusted, which by the way from the factory it was definitely not adjusted. I couldn't get this pin in with it in the up position. It's very easy to get it in. And this pin, I'll put this pin in going this way. That way in case I went pull on this, it won't pull out. Uh, but also it takes a little bit of pressure to get it out. But if you're really a stickler for making sure everything's secure. You can always just turn it, turn it to where there's a level, and give it a little pull. Now, now that thing's in there super tight. Uh, and I can get my fish head out. Uh, let's see here. What was I about to talk about? Oh yeah, oh yeah. For this uh, this front this front latch thing up here. And it closed back. Of course. Playing on 3,500 boxes. You can get. Two of those in here pretty decently. Uh, I bet it, I'd be willing to bet that if you went like one size smaller, you could get like three or four of those boxes in here. This would be like an awesome little tackle box for your boat. Uh, though, pretty much, if you're going fishing, if you got two 3600 Plano boxes and you need more than that, you have no idea what you're going out there for or what you're doing. Which I probably will be like that for a while because this is a new area and I have no idea what, what I'm fishing for or where. Anything, so I'm gonna bring all the baits I have to try and figure out how to fish around here. I have to relearn everywhere I go. Um, 
Uh, as far as the uh, this this area right here goes, too, there's a nice little cut and groove here. So if, I've seen some fish uh, fish cooler bags that'll fit down in here. And you can slip it right on in there. It's not in the way. So uh, so anyways, you got that uh, the hole there, and then. Uh, if you are going like pure stream fishing or you're not planning on having this, this bed boy with you while you're going fishing, so you're going on a five day trip down the river, I wouldn't even bring, bother bringing this. Uh, you have a nice paddle storage. There's a nice little cut in groove here. You can quick access, stick your paddle in there while you're fishing. Uh, I tell they really thought this out. Uh, let's start talking about this gearbox here. This thing is looking awesome. I took it apart yesterday. Let's talk about it. All right, so let's start off at the top. Uh, for the pedals, they're obviously bicycle pedals. You can see the reflectors in here. I guess it would help for search and rescue too if you ever got lost at sea. But uh, uh, it's got a nice rubber, rubberized matting on here that should be good for bare feet on a hot summer day, keep you from burning yourself. Uh, the actual arms here, I don't know if you can see it, but it says Pro Wheel Forged. I don't know if you can see that on the screen. Uh, those on the Mongoose mountain bike right there. Why is it my camera focusing? There it goes. Uh, those are also Pro Wheel Forged. Uh, might be the same company. Those are about an inch longer, but I'd be willing to bet they would bolt right onto here. <clears throat> uh, as far as everything I can tell in here, like the hardware, that's all good in stainless steel. The actual shaft going through that has the gear attached in the middle is uh, forged uh, definitely high quality I slipped a little bit of uh, a grease on there when I was when I was tightening this bolt down this bolt itself has locked tight but uh, make sure you do that uh, right here is a little service port where you put in oil or not oil grease uh, I didn't do that though I actually took mine off these four bolts on the bottom here uh, they're allen keys those things were all locked tighted in uh, I actually bent one of my Allen keys on the very first one, uh, trying to trying to loosen the bolt. I ended up going to get my socket set, so those are hard to get out and break loose. Uh, I, I literally packed the entire innards of this with grease uh, from the factory. It only has a little bit of grease. They say to only put three to five squirts per once a year in here. Which, by the way, you want to lay this on its side that way, basically where you're squirting grease down, because the gear that's in there that's real big. It'll land on the gear then, if you put three to five squirts in there. Uh, you can see the marking here. I'm probably gonna go over this with a, a white paint marker so I can see it easier at night, or dusk. But that's the uh, reference, so you can put it zero draft when folding it up. And speaking of which, when you put it at zero draft, you don't have to take this plate out like you see in a lot of the reviews. There's actually a, a little hole. Uh, when, I got this, when I got this new from the factory, uh, this was not set to zero draft. I had to adjust that. There's two ways you can do that. Uh, you could, you could just loosen the bolts there on the bottom, get that, at, get that at zero up top, turn it, and then tighten them back down uh, and get to get it to zero draft. Uh, what I ended up doing, because I already tightened these down, is I, when I took this off to put grease in there, when I put it back together, I just made sure that the top was at the zero draft mark when I, when I slid it back together. Uh, make sure I put Loctite on all these. Uh, there is an O-ring on the inner shell here. here. Let me go up here. As you can see, this this shaft right here, you can order all the parts of this separately too online, by the way. Uh, but you can see this right here. This little metal piece is about, that's about a quarter inch thick aluminum. So it's super solid when you bolt it together. And there's a groove cut out on the inside with an O-ring in there to keep the water out. Uh, what I did on this top half, I should have done just done that on the bottom half too is I put a thin layer of grease in there when I was bolting it together. It doesn't have that from the factory, but uh, if you've ever done plumbing in a house and you know that Vaseline well, is actually a good enough of a sealant on plumbing for your house under pressure to keep water from leaking. I had some leaking pipes and actually got suggested to do that by somebody on the phone one time and it totally worked. So I started doing that afterwards. But uh, my plumber's tape wasn't working. So uh, you could just put some grease in there. I put some marine grade that says it won't break down in salt water in there because I am using this pretty much purely in salt water. Uh, these end caps are threaded on, that's threaded, so I'll put a bead of silicone around that too. I didn't use grease for that. And I just sealed this thing up. Uh, both the gearboxes, the, everything inside looked good and solid. All the shafts, like I said, are forged. 
Uh, this blade is, is soft plastic, or hard plastic, I mean, uh, instead of metal, but that is fine. It is, it is still hard plastic, and with a one to six gear ratio, like one turn up top is six, six rotations on the bottom here. So how much force are you gonna be able to put that in to break it on something? And the part that's most likely to hit the ground first is gonna be this. <clears throat> Speaking of which, this is about a quarter inch thick aluminum too. It's nice and strong. Hello, buddy. It's like 25 degrees out here. And you're barefooted with no jacket. Are you cold? No. Okay. Well, you better go inside as soon as you get cold. All right, so uh, uh, this doesn't come with scupper plugs. I got a set of four. I only got four for my boat uh, for these four lower ones here in the footwell. Uh, I've noticed some of the guys in the reviews online, they'll have, I don't know how much the guys weigh or how much gear they have on, but the water is only like an inch below that. These are the, by far the lowest ones on the boat. All the other ones, if water gets in, I want it in here, yeah, so I'm just going to let them get water in them. There's two in the back back here too. Two behind the seat well here, uh, but there's a track here that the water, so all of that's leaning backwards and down, and there's a track here that collects it and sends it that way. So uh, if water does, and it's obviously several inches higher than the ones up front, so if water does get in there, it's going to be not nowhere near like it would be up here. Uh, so I'll just let those drain back, let that be open. Uh, all the tracks up here, they're all the Yak Attack plastic tracks, uh, not the metal. Uh, pretty sure those are your Yak Attack handles. Pretty sure. I'm not completely sure though. Um, let's see here. This guy right here, it's pretty simple. Like this is some of the screws I found that were loose. Went from the factory, it was obvious that they were loose because these things were spinning. But all that does is, all that is, so you can get in here. Uh, it, it's easy enough, so once you get it adjusted properly, to, it helps It helps to see if the blade is zero, put to zero or not. It's really easy to put this thing on and off. Uh, it's also so you can get in here and, and take off some of the weeds, which would probably be the only downside I've seen for this, this whole design. So this gearbox here is like when you get that proper wrapped in weeds and we're going to pull this out. Get this back to zero. Bam. Let's pull this up. Speaking of which, by the way, the first couple of times I moved this, that rubber mat was super stiff. I think I got some grease on the head of that thing now because it suddenly goes in and out easy. But uh, you can see uh, that it's going to be a little tight in there. But on a plus note, you can get this out on the water pretty easy. This side here's just got a little, for this main other pivot point right here. Uh, this, all this right here is like a really hardened plastic. I don't know what kind of plastic it is, but it's got metal sleeves going through it. Uh, it looks like it's the same type that my Rubbermaid Tough Totes are made out of. Uh, stock tanks, I mean, which they hold thousands of pounds for water, so this stuff should be pretty tough. It's got a metal insert in there. And uh, that, that bolt there is also uh, forged. Hold on a second. All right, so uh, you, can, you can pull that right out. Uh, you got that finger grip over here, and then you got a little hand knob over here. Just be careful not to drop it into the water, obviously. Uh, that's one thing I love about the design, while, is while it's in the up position, uh, this right here opens up the whole deck, so it's really easy for that fishing, like some of the other ones. Pretty well get in the way, or you have to tilt it forward. And there's, there's this big pile of props sitting right here that's in the way for you fishing. Just a big old snag hazard or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this right here is not going to fall out if you roll it 15 times in the surf. Uh, it's going to be good to go. I like it. It's simple. It's that made out of made in a way where I can work on it myself. Uh, these two arms right here are also that hardened plastic stuff. Uh, and all six of these bolts are what holds this 1 8 inch a quarter inch steel plate looks like it's about an eighth inch steel plate mount base plate for the whole thing down uh, this whole thing's built solid and uh, it's got this little feature right here that's where the this bar right here slides through at so if you do hit some rocks or whatever or stump hard enough it'll actually pop out and this thing, this thing will pop up and give so that's your weak point you want your weak point to be something that's easy to fix or won't break which is, that one won't break, you just pop it back in. Um, <clears throat> for this thing right here, 
it's all sanded. You can see where they, whenever, whenever they made all the stuff on this, you can see where they came back and sanded it smooth. They missed this forward edge on this one. So when this blade's up, which that blade does lightly touch the bottom of this plate, uh, but you can slide this up and down on this shaft by loosening these four bolts too, so you can adjust your draft. But, uh, so you can see, I can still get it in easy, so I'm not too worried about it, but it lightly rubs on that. So I'll probably just, all I'll do is I'll, like, I'll sand that smooth just for aesthetics, because I'm picky like that. Um, let's see here. I'll come back around to the steering in a second. Yes, buddy? I want to get it out. Oh, you're gonna get that out? Yeah, I got it locked in there. Was it locked in real good where you couldn't get it out? Yeah? All right, so I guess it'll stay in during the surf. If Nathan can't get it out, I know the water and the waves won't get it out. Here, I'm gonna get that out for you, buddy. Uh, for these six bolts that hold the system in, uh, when I, I backed them all out. I had to anyways, obviously. I had to adjust these front two brackets. Uh, I just, okay, so anyways. These right here were all red Loctited, I believe. If I can remember correctly, it doesn't matter. I put blue Loctite when I put them back in. Um, and these these were not. They all have anchor nuts that are uh, inside of the plastic here. So it's like integrated into the system, so it should be pretty solid. Uh, these these two back here look like, I'm not sure, that there might be a plate, metal plate going on the other side of the plastic, or they're just deeper anchor nuts. All right, moving on. Underneath the seat, there's two. I keep seeing people in some of the reviews talk about these two white caps here being some different uh, scupper holes. They're not, they go inside the hole. I'm not sure what they're for, there for. I guess it was to run some of the something. Help them put this thing together. Nathan, be careful, man. This thing could fall off real easy. Don't be shaking it. All right, so the seat adjusts really easy. Uh, I went ahead, went ahead. I have had this since I was in the army, so over, I got out of the army over 10 years ago, so I actually had this in a rack with me. I'm gonna put this on the seat. I'll have a good source of water while I'm in the water. Um, I'm probably gonna change out the bladder because it's still original. All right, so moving back to the seat. Uh, if you ever wanna actually get up underneath the seat here, uh, it's pretty easy. You just reach through here. Nice little bungee cord, you flip it. And this thing, this thing folds up forward already without that. And then you can just whoop. And you can get underneath your seat, so I'll probably be sticking a lunchbox or something under here whenever I go fishing. Get a good view of the handles. Nice molded in handles. Uh, I'll probably figure out something for storage underneath here. It's a big waste of space. I'll have to figure it out. I did find a made in China sticker on the seat. Uh, to my understanding, a lot of the uh, a lot of these uh, kayaks seats, these fancy seated ones. Are all uh, made in China. Uh, however, uh, this the early in the year model. Uh, these right here had issues with the strap breaking, is what they, they would say. But it wasn't actual strap breaking; it was a stitching coming undone. Uh, so now that I'll go ahead and tell you guys that the new stitching's got either anywhere from double stitching, two rows of double stitching, to uh, quadruple stitching on a single row, and then some some of the bigger things like the seat bottoms and stuff have double rows of quadruple stitching. Uh, it looks like the seat's made out of uh, a ripstop fabric, and that looks like a PVC screen that you can buy from Home Depot. So if you ever needed to, you could use this as a template down the road and remake your own screen if you wanted to. Uh, and the seat itself, just it's just simple piping. Looks like it's mandrel bent. Uh, let's see here. As everybody knows, the fishing rod holders do indeed suck. I have a feeling that uh, they cut somebody in management, probably told them that, because I know that the prototype had a picture with flush mount rod holders in here, and that's what this is meant for, I bet. Uh, but they decided not to do that, just in order to get that price point with below $17.99. Uh, so that, I bet that's where those where that went. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get four flush mount rod holders at an angle. I'm gonna put these front two angling this away, so I can, as soon as I hit the open ocean, I'm gonna throw two uh, rods behind me and uh, try to uh, do some trolling. I'm gonna go ahead, as I'm heading anywhere, I'm gonna have two baits behind me trolling at different distances. And then I could, uh, this, a two inch PVC pipe almost fits down in here. This, this slowly turns into a cone as you get towards the bottom. So you can actually, I've seen guys take a, a heat gun and heat up like, that's a pretty good deep, like probably five or six inch deep hole. Uh, 
So they'll take a piece of PVC pipe, two inch would be the size for this one, heat it up, and then they force it down in there and let it cool. And then they can use that to mount or to rig up their own little fishing rod bar going across that of PVC. They'll glue it together and paint it after they get it together. Uh, I'm just gonna do uh, two flush mount rod holders, two going this way and then two going backwards. And then uh, this is my Walmart cruiser I just picked up yesterday for $15.88. It's not rated to hold ice for five days, but I'm not planning on doing five days fishing without coming back. I'm not going to spend five days in this boat. If I ever get into doing like trips down a river for more than one day and I'm bringing food for me and my family and it needs to stay cold, then I'll consider it. But other than that, Trister, here's my, this is my fish box. So, uh, $15, about the same price as a milk crate, but it's insulated, it's sealed shut. I can keep fishing it. I don't need to buy one of those $90 uh, soft bag fish coolers. I've got this. But uh, this right here, I just literally mounted in. It's got uh, two feet along the edge this way that uh, are supposed to help it keep cool on, if you set it on a hot surface. I didn't care about that, but it's just got that so you know. Uh, it's 14 inches by, wide by 24 inches long, in case you're wondering, and you have one of these kayaks already. Uh, and these little grooves here, uh, they go all the way to just about the forward edge. Uh, so since this is resting against the forward edge, it's kind of locked in there. If I put some ice in there, it really locks in there. Put some weight in there. Uh, so that's this. All I have is some slip knots. Tied it down. It's not even strapped down. I took the, uh, the stock bungee cord that was in here out. It was super. It took me like 10 seconds to get it out. Uh, so I just have that going, cord going across both both sides. And then, even though this cooler from Walmart, it's got a it's got a pretty good latch on it. I expect to keep this cooler for a good 10 years or so. Uh, so uh, whenever I'm getting ready to come back in through the surf, just in case I roll my kayak, I built this, this little bungee thing. It's extra reinforcement. It adds like another 10 pounds of pressure to it. Should counteract the fact that the stuff's rolling around in there, hitting the lid. Uh, let's talk about on this rear deck back here. Uh, you can see, I don't know what this is for. I'm sure somebody out there will know and they'll answer down below. Uh, this right here is for like a river stick or a power pole. I like the river stick better because there's no electricity. That's just way, 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 way more weight to add to something I want to keep light, which is another bonus of not having an expensive cooler that weighs about 10 pounds, whereas a rotor motor cooler about the same size can weigh about 35 to 45 pounds. I want to keep this booger light. Um, so you, could, you got a nice flat thing right here. I've seen people make their own river poles too. It's literally just a fiberglass pole that you have a pulley system you set up for from up front and you just pull, you let go of a rope and it, it drops and slams into the ground and holds you where you're at. You can make them up to like, you can hold yourself still up and then like nine feet of water if you have a 10 foot pole. Uh, for the, uh, there's only one handle on this side. I'll probably put another one here if I don't do the river pole. I'll put two handles in here for better handling because it wants to roll when you get it from one side. Uh, the actual tail paddle itself, it's got a nice super tight bungee there for you going down the road and a groove right there. Uh, there is a little cap right here. Uh, it's like the only access point in the whole boat for uh, getting inside the, the actual hole. Uh, I did find that when they cut this out, I don't know if they just started doing it or they've been doing it, nobody's noticed it yet, but the actual plastic, they left it in the hole. That's a great thing because I do plan on keeping this long enough to have to do a repair sometime and I'll have my plastic on hand already. I'll just use my heat gun, melt it and repair it. Um, so for your anchor trolley system, you basically say before you, before you go out to the surf, this is mostly for like driving down the road and stuff. Uh, before you get out in the surf, you let that go. You could even let this up a little bit if you want. I probably will do that or hold it so. Um, I, I did come through and put some grease. There's like several discs in here, one on each side of this thing. Because uh, it was squeaking, it was annoying. So let's get grease in there now. I'll probably just set that up like that and then I'll head out of the surf. When you get out there, uh, I'll say that this pulley system is not a pulley system, it's just a plastic cap with a plastic bar in the middle. So 
all of this stuff doesn't have pulleys. Uh, so this thing doesn't turn as easy so, as what like a yak attack will. Um, I'm probably gonna change this one out here because it's an extreme angle. And this one out right here for one with a pulley. Uh, but basically, after playing with it and getting everything lubed up, like lubing that thing also made it easier to flip. And I found out also, if I aim this to the left, darn near all the way, it lines that up and it takes away the angle point on the rope up there. It makes this thing really easy to flip out. What, is your car in the way? You can just flip this out. I'm trying not to slide this off of my little belly. But... And once you get it in there, this, this right here, uh, this is the other, the other last two screws that I found loose were the, the ones for the bottom plate here. This thing is so simple. It's only got three screws holding it together, but it's super simple. Um, and the more you tighten these screws down though, the, the harder it gets to turn this. So that's just the way it is. So you don't want to tighten this one up too much and you don't want to tighten those up too much. So I'll put a little grease in there. Makes that easier to spin. All right, hold on, hold on, guys. All right, so as far as uh, as far as this tailpiece goes, uh, these uh, stock steering cables, they're actually uh, like a wax coated string. It seems like once I got them adjusted properly and everything, all that wasn't adjusted properly when I got it. I pulled them tight, and I got these put in. They were just hanging out loose when I took it out of the package. <clears throat> this whole this whole thing seems pretty solid, pretty good to go. As you can see, the uh, tail paddle there it's got a little room to play like if you want to add more rudder it doesn't have to go deeper for a deeper draft you can add rudder this way or that i've seen some guys already trying to do that online to get their boat turning sharper i think i'll be fine but if you're going to the end you obviously don't want to make it where it's going to hit that and you go as high as you need to make it longer but this boat will turn that's all i need it to do and uh, that's not one of those spring-loaded systems. Wherever you turn this is where it stays. So you can adjust it while you're, while you're on the fly fishing and make little adjustments depending on current and wind and all that good stuff. All right, and then uh, you got a paddle holder over here on this side. It's the only other thing. Uh, I've got a. My, it seems to hold my paddle pretty well. I'm just gonna turn the blades to where they're cur curved in towards the side of the boat, and then. Uh, should hold it. I'll put a little leash on it and just put it there and pretty much forget about it until I need it. So I get some flats or something. All right. Let me know if you have any questions below. I'll totally answer them. If you're considering getting one of these, I'll tell you later. I haven't, I haven't taken this out yet. It's uh, currently in the teens outside, even here in Mobile, Alabama. It's cold. Well, it's been good in the scenes at night. It's in the 20s during the day. All right, so if you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, this seems like it's a great, great deal for the amount of money. I mean, I paid $14.99 for this at the year-end sale at Academy. Uh, some of the online websites say that you can get it for that price, but it's also free, tax-free and free shipping. So if you get that, that's even better because I paid 10% tax. Um, let me know if you have any questions. All right, so the actual hull of these boats are uh, rotor molded, which is the best. Uh, rotor molded and uh, assembled and all that stuff in uh, South Carolina, U.S. Uh, so it is American made. Uh, obviously, some of the components, like the chair, are not made in the U.S. It's just assembled, as in stuck on the boat real quick in South Carolina. Uh, it looks like it's a good, good made, well-made product and well worth the money. All right, here's some things I'm going to try to fit, uh, fit some of my other boxes in the uh, this front box here. So I, can, I can fit one, let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, three, three of these boxes in there perfectly. I don't know what size that is. It's made by Flam, Flam, Flambeau. And this is a classic little box I've had forever. It has like, actually has my flies in here and stuff. Uh, and put those in there. Stack them up as many as you want to. Put those in there. 
is a this is a Plano 3500s. Two of them in there. Just fit fine. Uh, whenever I'm fishing, I'll I'll have to make sure to remember to stop with this pedal facing down when I'm fishing to be able to get that out and then obviously I'll, I'll put it up to fold it forward for the reference but if I put it down then I, with my left hand I'll be able to I'll be pulling in a fish with my right hand and then just pull out a net scoop it up it goes right there and it like locks in it's just the way it's set up uh, this right here is a 20 liter dry bag they'll also fit in there quite nicely yeah. actually it'll fit, in, it'll fit in there I blew it up some air yesterday. It's shrunk now because I've squished it, but it'll actually fit in here just fine. You can keep some stuff in a dry bag up here and then still be able to fit that fishing net in here without a hitch. And that's adjustable, obviously, so you can make it tighter. But that front, that front net, the way it's set up on the bungee cords, means you can expand a long ways out and fit a pretty darn big bag under there. But as you can see, it'll still fit in there just fine. All right, so uh, subscribe to stay tuned if you're interested in this boat. I'm gonna plan on making some more, more future videos. I'm gonna do one for the maiden voyage and then try to get some cameras and take them out with me into the bay backwaters. I'm going to be mostly fishing brackish waters and open ocean. So, uh, catch you later.